Hello, this is Penny Whitlock from Penny'sPorch.com. In today's Creative Arts DIY, we're going to be transforming this Dollar General unfinished wood panel into a little shadow box. Or you could use it as wall art. And the design that we'll be doing today is similar to this one right here. So I'll readjust the camera and we'll get started. To get started with our project, we're using the Iron Orchid Designs Air Dry Clay. And all we need to do is tear us off a small chunk of the clay, just like this. Now I'm going to, I have a Ziploc bag here, and I'm going to store my clay in this bag while it's not in use because it is air dry clay, so I want to make sure it doesn't get dried out. Okay. Now, I've got a little roller pin here, and I'm just going to roll me out a piece of clay. What I want to try to do is have some cornstarch. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of cornstarch on my work surface. The inside of our wood panel is where I'm going to be placing the clay to make our 3D wall art or shadow box. And um, so I'm rolling out some clay to fit uh, not, you know, in, not completely inside, but just in the center portion. And I'm rolling it kind of, kind of on the thin side. Just like that. Okay, let's see what we got so far. Okay. I think we need a little bit more out this way. Okay, now I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm just going to trim right along this edge right here, and pull that extra out. I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. Okay, so that's what we have so far. All right, now I'm going to get my Iron Orchid Designs Kindest Regard stamp set, and it looks like this right here. It's a, a stamp set that I use a lot for background textures and designs and things like that. Now let me bring my wood panel back over and see what I want to be the top or bottom or sides. I think I'm going to do it kind of like this where I have um, the wider part down toward the bottom. All right. Now, I'm going to take my kind of regard stamp set and my clay and I'm just going to simply place the stamp set right on top of the clay and I'm going to start pressing it down. 
because we really want a really good impression of the stamp set in our clay. Now I'm not I'm not really smashing it, um, but I am pressing it down rather you know firmly, just right into the clay. Okay. Now I'll turn it over. And I'm just going to let it kind of fall away from the stamp set. You'll have some edges that might tear a little bit because um, the, the clay is so thin. But that's kind of what we want. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is get out some of the glue, and I'm using the Tight Bond Quick and Thick Multi Surface Glue. I'm going to turn my clay over and just get some glue on it. My bottle's getting a little bit low, I think. And I got a popsicle stick. I'm just using it to spread the glue around. Okay, I think that's good. Got a thin layer of glue. Now I'm just placing my clay, my stamped clay on the inside. Okay, let me trim that a little bit more right there. Okay, now we have our clay glued inside of our new little shadow box. I got a little bit of glue on the back of it. I want to take on the inside here, I want to just use my finger and kind of press down on the edges. This is, this is going to help adhere the clay to the inside, but it's also lending to that vintage old world style that we're looking for for this project. So I'm just going around all the edges and just kind of extra, you know, taking a little extra time to make sure the edges are pressed down real well. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is get out our laurel mold and we'll get another little piece of clay I'm going to get out a little bit more cornstarch and I have a, a paintbrush that I use specifically for these projects and I just use the paintbrush dip it into some of the cornstarch and just give it a light dusting. You don't need very much. All right, now I'm rolling up the clay and you can use your table to roll it out too. But I'm just kind of getting an idea of about how much will fit in the mold cavity for the casting that we're making right now. And this is the laurel mold from Iron Orchid Designs. And all I'm doing right now is just pressing the clay down into the mold.
I think I need a little bit more clay. So I'll add a little bit more right there. I don't like to overfill them, but at the same time, you don't want to underfill them either, so. And as you play with it a little bit, you get more of an idea of about how much you need. And you can always take away and add to, so there's no pressure. Okay, now I have one of these scraper tools and just with real light pressure um, at a slanted angle, probably about, I guess, a 45 degree angle, I'm just going around and removing some of the excess clay from the top of the mold. All right, now I like to take my scraper tool and I just like to go very, very lightly across the top and pick it off just like that. Now, I take my finger and I go all the way up and down the casting because I like to make sure it's really nice and smooth and with the Iron Orchid Designs molds, they have the patent pending micro rim. So when you're feeling it, you can tell right here. You see that little rim right there? Okay, that's the patent pending micro rim. And that's exclusive to these Iron Orchid Designs new, new molds. So when I take my finger and I gently rub across the top like that, I'm making sure the clay is smooth across the surface, just like so. And I'll just turn it over and just let gravity take over and let the casting fall out of the mold. So there's what you have and what we're going to do let me turn it around to face me there for a second is that we're going to be placing I think I'm going to place it this way but we're going to be placing one of the laurel on this side and then we'll make one for this other side so let's, let's do that right now. So this was the one that we just did. So let's get out a little bit more cornstarch. And we'll do the other side. Okay. I need it for a minute or two in my hands, but it doesn't take, you know, you don't have to do very much. Now here's another thing you can do too. You can take your thumb and just Press it down into the mold and gently scrape away 
the excess. Um, a lot of people use this technique right here. I, I don't normally because I feel like I tend to um, kind of dive down into the clay a little bit too much when I use my thumb, but I do sometimes. It just, it really depends on the, you know, the cavity, the casting that, that you're doing. There's just, you know, certain things that are just easier to use. You can use a credit card or, you know, just whatever works for you. Just go ahead and get my scraper tool. Just kind of gently do it that way. But then again, I'm going with my finger because I want to make sure. When I, when I do this part right here where I run my finger across there, that helps me make sure that I have the clay in there really smooth. I like for the back of the clay to be really smooth so that when I adhere it to my projects, I feel like it's gonna get a good stable adhesion. And then also, um, I don't have to worry about any kind of flyaways being having to be trimmed off because, you know, I have went around the micro rim. Let me turn this around this way and see if it's any easier for you guys to see. I'm just folding it back and letting it fall out. Just like that. Okay. Now I have the Iron Orchid Designs new butterflies mold. So I'm gonna pinch off another little piece of clay. And I'm gonna get me a little bit of cornstarch. I'm gonna use this butterfly right up here. Just pressing the clay down into the mold. Getting some of the excess off with my thumb. There we go. I'm going to use my scraper tool. Oh. Let's try that again. I think I had too much cornstarch in it. It just pulled it all up out of there. But that's good because that shows you guys what can happen. No worries. We just press it back down in there and do it again. Okay. Try 
about that way this time. All right, let me run my finger around it. That feels good to me. I'm gonna put this little piece of extra clay in my bag. Flip it over. And just kind of fold it back and let your casting fall out of your mold. Okay? There's our pretty little butterfly. Now what I want to do is I want to make my butterfly a little 3D. So I haven't glued these laurel down yet. So I'm just kind of bringing them over more toward the center. And I think what I'm going to do is um, just have think I'm going to have the bottom part just kind of almost meet together right here and then there'll be a little bit of separation up here and then I'm going to take my butterfly and I'm going to put it in just like this and then that way the butterfly wings are, are um, up a little bit so when we get ready to glue that in that's the way we'll glue that in all right now I'm just going to let that sit there for a second. And now we're going to use the new bird song mold. And it's this one right here. And this is the bird that I'm going to be using for right now. So I'll put some cornstarch in it. The butterflies and the birdsong molds are two of IOD's newest molds. And they're really nice. And I just pinched off another chunk of clay. I think I have probably way too much, but I'll just put the excess back in my bag. This project is going pretty quickly because um, okay now I have scraped off the excess with my thumb now I'm going to use my scraper tool. And just scrape across the top. Now I'm going to go across it with my finger. I'm going to make sure I'm taking advantage of that micro rim because I don't have to worry about flyaways and I know that my casting is going to be perfect. There we go. Flip it over. Okay. And here's our pretty little bird. And I'm going to be putting him right down here. And I think the way I'm going to do him is about right. Yeah, 
about right here, maybe. Something like that's what I have in mind for him. Okay. Now we're going to glue on our laurel. So I'm just putting some glue on the back. Spreading it with my popsicle stick. Just like that. Trying to make sure that I get from side to side and up and down without a lot of excess glue. But the glue does dry clear and it is paintable. So it doesn't bother me if I get a little bit too much. I'd actually rather have a little bit too much than not enough, I think. All right, I'm just kind of setting that down in there, but not pressing it down yet till I get the other one in there. Just spread my glue. Okay. Now we'll put this one down and then we'll kind of, let me get a wipe for my hands. Okay, let me hold it up here just a second so I can kind of see. Okay. Now that's what I have so far. So I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm just going to gently press the laurel on top of the um, kind disregards clay that we did earlier. I want to make sure that it's nice and secure. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do is glue our butterfly. And I'm going to focus on getting the glue right in the very center portion of the butterfly. Because I know that Part of the wings are going to be 3D, like 3D like, and sticking up, so part of the wings won't be glued. But most of it will be, because some of it, some of the wings will be touching the laurel. So I'm still going to spread it out quite far, and I think the glue helps stabilize the casting anyway. Okay. Let me turn this around so you guys can see it. All right, I'm just gonna lay my butterfly in there. And I just adjust it to where I want it. And I think that looks good. Okay, so I'm sort of pressing it down. So the bottom part of our butterfly is pressed solid down and then the other part of our butterfly, the top part, is attached to the laurel. So it's glued pretty well. Okay, now let's glue our bird.
okay? We want our bird to be, I think we want our bird to be about right there. There we go. And I'm taking my fingers and I'm just gently pressing him down, not too firmly. But I want him to be secure. Now, I'm going to use this wipe and I'm going to use my fingernail and just kind of get some of the excess glue out. But I'm not really worrying about it because it doesn't really hurt anything. Um, but I don't like a lot of excess to be in there. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, what we need to do now is we need to let our castings form sort of like a crust, a surface crust. And so what we'll do now is we'll let this set and it depends on the humidity and that temperature and that type of thing in, in your environment. But you need to let it set at least 10, 15 minutes and up to about 30 minutes. And then you'll know because it'll feel, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be dry of course, cause it takes at least about 24 hours for it to really dry, um, depending on the casting. But it should be dry enough with a, a nice surface crust on it to where we can start painting it. So, we'll let this dry like I say, 10 to 30 minutes, and then we'll come back and start doing some painting. Okay, now that we have let our castings dry enough to where we have a surface crust on there, we're gonna start painting. And I have a cream color chalk style paint. And I also have a really soft paintbrush. This is one of the, it's a number two Beniki brush. I bought a set of brushes a while back from Amazon. And this was one of the brushes that was in the set. So now all I'm doing is I'm using this really soft brush you want to use a really soft brush because you want to get down in all the little cracks and crevices but at the same time you don't want to distort your castings and even though we let it surface dry you know the castings are still really wet so now just go in and give all the inside one coat of this cream color chalk style paint. And be careful around your butterfly because with the wings propped up like that, it's gonna want to, it's gonna tend to want to break easier than it any of the other castings. And as you're going along and putting the paint on your castings and on the kind of regards area that we stamped, you just want to make sure that you have one good coat of paint and you want to make sure the paint goes down into all the little cracks and crevices but you don't want puddles of paint uh, it's really important that you use that that's part of the reason for using the soft brush because with the soft brush it doesn't distort the 
casting and you can get down in there and get the excess paint out and that's what you want to do you just want to go all around your castings put in some paint but not distort the casting and you want to you want to just make sure you have good coverage but not puddles of paint okay now let's get some of this part painted I'm not really worrying about covering it all because we'll be doing another layer of paint and I like the variations that it makes by not having complete coverage. So I'm just going around. It's almost kind of a dry brush technique, but not quite, but almost. Because some areas I do have good coverage. Okay. And then we'll get over here on the sides. Now, I believe we have some pretty good coverage all the way around and all on our castings. Have a little bit of puddle of paint right there, so I'm going to dab it off with my wipe that I have here. I'm just kind of checking it. It looks good to me. All right, let's let it dry a good 10, 15 minutes. And then we'll be back to finish this up. Now I have some Deco Art Americana Raw Sienna. And I am just placing a small amount in a little cup. And then I'm adding some water to that. And I'm using the same paintbrush we used earlier. I want it to be pretty watery. Okay. So you can see it's pretty watery. All right, and now what we're gonna do I have the wipe that we were using earlier as well. And I'm going to take my brush and we'll go across these castings down toward the bottom. Now you can use whatever colors you want. You could do blue, brown, you know, just whatever colors you want for this step right here. Just mix it with some water. And be careful about, um, you have to make sure that your brush is soft and you want to be careful about how long you let the water set on your castings because it will make them, you know, really soft. All right. Now, I'm just using the white and I'm just going in and dabbing it back off. And wiping the top part but carefully because I don't want to um, I don't want to tear up my castings and 
and I want the raw sienna to really stay down in the cracks and crevices. But I'm wiping it away from the surface. Okay. Now we'll just keep going all the way around. Do a little bit at a time. And something else to think about with not only Iron Orchid Designs air dry clay, but any kind of air dry clay that you use, is that with any kind of air dry clay, there's always going to be some shrinkage and some natural cracking. And that's just the natural process of the clay. So keep that in mind. This kind of project is perfect for air dry clay because we don't mind with a vintage old world style project. We don't mind a little bit of cracking and a little bit of separation of the clay. But keep that in mind for whichever project you're working on. Okay, I think we got, let me see, there's a couple little spots up here at the top that I missed. Let me grab those real quick. No one probably would have ever noticed that, but I did, so couldn't let it go. <laughs> okay, now I have some Q-tips here, and I'm just going to go into this, just this top part right here, underneath where the butterfly wing is, and get out some of that extra paint. Because, you know, like I said, I don't want, I don't want big gobs of paint in there. Okay, I think that's good. Just kind of going in and making sure I don't have big gobs of paint anywhere. Or puddles of paint. Looks good to me. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my same white, and I'm just going to wipe across the top and put a little bit of paint on it. And I'm just going to wipe it across the top. Because I don't want it to be solid, you know. I want that old world look like it's been around for a while. So now this is what we have and I'm going to let this dry 24 hours and then I'm going to use some of the pixie dust hemp paste finishing wax and what I'll do is I'll let it dry 24 hours and then I'll take a wax brush and my pixie dust hemp paste finishing wax and I'll just put some wax on my brush and I'll just go in and gently wax it now when you get to like the butterfly um, I probably would be, I'd be a little bit more cautious about using like a wax brush around the butterfly. Um, what you probably need to do when you get around the butterfly is just simply use your finger and apply a little bit of wax carefully around the butterfly or on the butterfly. And, and actually, you actually don't need to apply the wax. Um, I like to 
because it helps protect it and it helps um, when you get ready to dust it and that type of thing. Um, and so this, it'll just be so much easier to wipe off and to clean and to dust and that type of thing. And it helps protect it, you know. And it gives it just a, a really nice look too. Um, it's, a, it's, it's one of the best finishing waxes I believe I've ever used. And all of these products that, that I'm using today, you can find them available on my website at penniesporch.com. Um, I am a stockist for Iron Orchid Designs, and I am a stockist for Pixie Dust Paint Company. So, again, it's penniesporch.com. You can find the IOD stamp sets and the molds, transfers, Pixie Dust, Hemp Paste Finishing Wax. And I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and that you will subscribe so that you'll be notified when a, a new tutorial is listed. Thanks so much for watching. Have a creatively blessed day. Bye-bye.